why you just saw me grab the mic out of nowhere like a mad dash. <laughs> All right. Um, we've got plenty to discuss tonight. Well, we will be discussing um, is Joel uh, Glazier the problem at Man United? We'll be discussing will he give the help uh, to uh, soon to be announced manager Eric Ten Hag the, the help that he needs? Um, there's news or there's, there was talk that potentially Cristiano Ronaldo vetoed uh, Antonio Conte. We're going to be discussing that. We're discussing all sorts of things. We've got plenty to discuss. Um, First of all, I'm joined by Garth. How you doing, Garth? Yeah, mate, great, thanks. Like Hammer used to say, too legit to quit. So. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Lauren Page. How you doing, Lauren? I'm all right, thank you. Good to have you back. And we've got James, the shoulders out again. You're absolute savage. I know, now, do you know what, yeah? Now, do you know what, yeah? yeah? Um, as, in like a, as like a celebration for us hitting 1K, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go and visit a few people. Yeah, I've not really mentioned it to anyone really yet. So this is off the cuff. I've, I've spoken to James about it. I'm gonna be doing uh, a gym session with James. He's gonna put me through his paces like the same way that he he's getting because he's getting ready for a competition. Yeah. So I said as a sort of one k, take me to your gym. And, and put me through my paces. I'm going to film it, and you're going to see me in absolute agony. I don't know why I'm doing it, but it's, it's good. Con- I feel like it's going to be good content. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> How you doing, James? Yeah, good man. It's going to be good crack. Uh, Nathan lives around the corner, so we'll get Nathan along as well. It's going to be a, yes. a good crack. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I just yes, can't wait yes, to see yes, you cry. Yes. No. I guess I've, never seen, I've never seen one of my mates die on YouTube before. So that's going to be, <laughs> be, be staying different for me, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like day, Karen. Like day. No, no, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. Every day, every day, every you can't day, do that. Day. You can't day. do that. Like day, man. Let's go. I'm getting upset. I'm getting upset. <laughs> <laughs> off now. No, no, I, I can't, I'm not scared of leg day, but um, I, I still need to be able to walk for the rest of the weekend. So... We're, we'll have a conversation about it afterwards. We'll, yeah. uh, we'll discuss it. Once you've been on the cover of Championship Manager, mate, like everything else is just second mate, <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> hey, Don't worry. Uh, also, we can have an advert <laughs> that I've been in <laughs> live yeah, on the really show, yeah, just yeah. reminiscing. Throwback Thursday, they called it, yeah. So, uh, so <laughs> but first of all, first of all, that's to wipe the smiles off your face because we're going to discuss Everton. Yeah. <laughs> so, first and foremost, Garth, the Everton game. Um, I mean, it was it was false positivity last week. I I, I crowbarred in a come and give me the score. It's got to be a win. Um, but I know deep down inside, you was probably a little bit worried about it. But yeah, what what did you witness on last week against Frank Lampard's Everton side? Witness a horror show, mate. It's like one of the worst performances I've ever seen. And I mean, that's not being hyperbolic. I've had a week now. One of the worst performances I've seen from Man United. The decision making on the like the technical side of it, the decision making on the pitch was poor. The runs, the space opening, it was all poor. But more importantly, was the effort given by a lot of the players out there. It felt like they're, I hate to use the word given up because you can't say about professional sportsmen, but they weren't giving a 100 percent there like they, they can't have been because everton are so poor at the moment so poor and they don't number on us it, it's a madness really so yeah i don't see how this team comes back under any manager there needs to be some serious reinvestment in this squad big time whether that be youth players coming up as well as well as signings that's another matter but we need new players front to back all over the all over the pitch pretty much so uh, dreadful dreadful performance and yeah one of the worst i've ever seen from a man united team wow 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 absolutely scathing there um lauren what, what was it you saw how bad was it for you it was abysmal like i i i, I again want to say we've got a team that have given up our heads were down there was there was no effort. It was like we weren't on the pitch. Our heads weren't there at all. You know, they were. It wasn't in the game, and it's frustrating as a fan to watch because if you're sitting and watching your team at least try, and not getting the results, it's a little bit easier on you because you can see that they are still putting in the effort for the club. But when we're sat here watching them just not give their all like they should do for the badge. It's it's so frustrating and that's what we saw in that Everton game. 
That 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 must be the worst worst feeling as a fan, though. Like they're not giving the effort. That's what you, you, the the minimal thing you want to see is some work rate, some sort of some passion. Yeah, and I think that's because because as much as it's painful to watch week in week out at the moment, we're still there. We're still supporting, and we're still going to watch them. Yet they don't they don't really give back. I know. They don't just play for the fans, but they should do. They should think about us as well. Mm -hmm. We're here to watch them. We we basically are part of the reason they have their careers because we all the money that they get because of the the economic. Try that again. The economics of football. So, (laughs) um, they have to think about us, and when they they're kind of letting us down by walking on that pitch with their heads already dropped. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Uh, James, did, did you did you expect that level of performance in any way, shape, or form last week? Was you surprised? You know what? This is probably going to be the most telling thing of all. But no, hmm. no, I wasn't. And to say that that was probably one of the worst Man United performances I've ever seen, and I wasn't shocked by it, is crazy, right? Like hmm. I know Garth and Lauren kind of said that. Oh, you can't say professional sportsmen or sports people have given up. Well, what I witnessed for 90 minutes on the pitch was 11 players that had given up. Um, sorry to say, like completely given up. Um, it was just devoid of anything, mate. Like you talk about effort being the bare minimum, playing for the badge being the bare minimum. Uh, I can excuse a poor technical performance. We all have our off days at work, um, but we all still show up. I hope anyway. We don't just ring up and call in sick and say we're not putting in a performance today. We still turn up and we try. And the fact that they wear that badge that says Manchester United on the front of their shirt. And three of us here would probably do anything to put on that shirt and play in front of 75,000 week in, week out. And they're just not even trotting around the pitch. They're just walking around the pitch like they don't even care. Mm. Lauren said that, you know, they may not play for us fans, but at the end of the day, like she said, the economic impact of it. I mean, we are basically paying them at the end of the day. Like the reason they get paid so highly is because it's a spectator sport. If no one watched, then there wouldn't be the economy around it and they wouldn't get paid and they wouldn't have the lifestyles that they do. So they do owe something to the fan base. And I'll tell you what they do owe. They owe a damn sight more than they showed last weekend because they were absolutely awful is the the most polite word I can use, mate. They were awful. Was there anything that could be taken out of that game? No. No. Nothing Uh, whatsoever. Well, to be honest, they asked me that on uh, on the match review. United view and I said I said the only positive to come out of this result is the fact that the United PR machine will spin and come Monday we'll get an announcement on Ten Hag and shock mm. horror Monday 5.58 because we went live mm. at 6 there was an announcement and a leak about Ten Hag and people were like oh no they won't leak it because it's like the Ajax is still in the title race I'm like I'm very much aware of how Manchester United works I've been around this club for a long time they've been run exactly the same way for years they will try and spin a positive out of it mm. And they did. And all of a sudden, the fan base haven't forgotten. But all of a sudden, I'm seeing a few more positive videos now. There wasn't any on Saturday, was it? A few more positive videos come Monday. So they know what they're doing, man. They're not done, but no positives for me. Yeah. Um, How how do you not even rescue the rest of the season, Garth? But how do you make sure the rest of the season isn't just an absolute embarrassment? I've got, like, touch wood, it doesn't, but I've got a bad feeling that's what we've got coming, to be quite honest with you. Like, after the Everton game, and like everyone's saying, like, I was being polite, like, they, they gave up on the pit, like, they, they were awful, they, they gave us nothing. I can't see us getting a point in a, a single game from now on after that before. If we play anything like that against any team in the Premiership, we're getting beaten. Maybe a draw here or there. We're certainly not going to be beating them. We've got Norwich next, and I'm actually thinking... Poor Norwich. Oh, it's home though, at least we're at home. That's all right. Maybe we'll do something there. Like it's Norwich. We're Man United. Like yeah. no, there's no turning this around at this stage. Like I'm saying, we like we need signings. The only positive that come out now is if um, Ragnick decided to start playing the youth players till the end of the season, and maybe three or four youth players turn our season around. That's it. That's my. That's the only thing I can think of here, honestly. Do, do, Lauren, is there? You're nodding your head about that. Is, is, that, is that something you'd like to see then? And who would who, who who in that Man United team would you drop for the for the youngsters? Don't say what youngsters, but who would you take out for the youngsters? I think that was going to be my exact point. We, if our uh, starting eleven have already given up on this season, 
why not give the kids a go? Because if anything, it can be the best thing ever because they could, you know, make us a little bit better for the last few games. In terms of dropping, it'd be your Rashford, um, a drop, McTominay, Maguire, Fred, Pogba, I won't play him. Get a squad sheet out. Is it? Yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. Just Get a squad sheet out, yeah. <laughs> just take the whole starting 11 away and start again with the kids. <laughs> Bring in the under 23s, their whole squad. Let's have them for the last few. Because it's. They don't. They, our starting 11 at the moment, our senior squad, don't deserve to even try and pull this team around because they got us to where we are in the first place. So just, just play the kids. We've got nothing to lose now, really. Because we're already we're already on a downward spiral, so the only way is up if you if you change it completely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, James, last one on on the Everton game. What 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 do you think? Was this? You said it wasn't a surprise, but how? Do, what does Ralph Regnick do? How does he get something out of him? Because he's got he's got what eight or eight or nine games left. Uh, Man United, they're 11 points above Leicester, so they're probably not going to drop too too many places down. But you've got to have, hold some pride. They know the new manager's coming in. Surely he's going to keep a watchful eye of who's potentially still putting in a shift. Surely they've got to be thinking about that. Uh, I think a lot of these players are brain dead, mate. I don't think they're thinking about <laughs> anything. Like Apart from collecting their paycheck on a Friday night, I don't know what they're thinking about because they're certainly not thinking about impressing a future manager because that would have been done by now at the mm. end of the day. like They would have known that Ten Hag was watching the Everton game. They would have known that. Like, and then there was news just after that of Leipzig like potentially hijacking the deal. It's like, no, the only person hijacking the deal after that is Ten Hag himself, mate. He's, <laughs> wa he's watching the absolute shower of shit and he's turning straight back round because there's not a chance that he's coming to manage any of them. They're all awful, mate. Like Lauren and Garth touched on playing the youth. That potentially is a way out of the situation. There's a flip side to that, though, like with how toxic it is. The people, mm. then, do you want to throw them into that atmosphere? Hopefully, the fans yeah. get behind the youth, but but you never know. Garth's wearing a bit of a throwback shirt. You'll never win anything with kids. Well, we might not win anything, but we might see something from the kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> we might. Well, we can only see more than what we're seeing at the moment, mate. Yeah, at the end exactly. of the day, it's it's awful. Like, and on Lauren's point, who would you drop? I literally, there isn't a single person I wouldn't drop, mate. I'd even like, I'd even say, you know, give Henderson a chance in goal, see if it makes a difference having a sweeper keeper. I'd definitely play Fernandez at left back. I'd 100% have Garnacho in the team. I'd have McNeil in the squad all day. I'd have Mabry. I'd have Shuratere. I'd have all these lads in the squad, like without a shadow of a doubt. There's loads of good talent in that. And every time I go and watch the 23s or the 18s, they play a style of football, they play with intent, they play with enthusiasm, they pass and move, they press, they look hungry. And none of our starting 11 look like that. So drop any of them, bring them in, give them a run out, give them the experience. And I've said over and over again, we've got no strikers, right? Rashford's not in the conversation when you talk about dropping Rashford because like, we play Pogba and Bruno up front as two false sixes before we even play Rashford. So he's irrelevant. So R Cavani's off on his own sick note. So we've got Ronaldo as a striker, right? Why is Charlie McNeil not in the squad learning off Cristiano Ronaldo? Mm -hmm. Why has he not been promoted to the first team squad? He could learn off arguably the greatest player of all time and he's not even in that squad. He's an absolute baller if you watch McNeil. Honestly, he's an absolute baller. Can't wait to see him in the team. There's just like... I you think he's got a serious chance of getting in that team with potentially a, a manager like Ten Hag? Um, it's, a re it's a long shot because you never know once you've seen people at youth level whether they're going to make the step up. I remember... Um, yeah. James Wilson had a really good uh, like youth setup, right? A really good record at youth level. And he said the first, well, he actually scored first time in the Stratford end, but he said after that, after the whole game, like that playing in front of them was a different kettle of fish, completely different environment, different pressure. And, uh, and he kind of didn't cope with it well. You look at someone like Rashford, who was poor at youth level, but then made the step up. Greenwood was elite at youth level and then was kind of elite when he started his career as well. So it's like, sometimes you make the step up, sometimes you flourish. Sometimes you don't. Makeda, for example, one game, never saw him again. So it's like you never know whether it's going to happen, but the kid deserves a chance. Yeah, yeah, very good points. Um, is he, the, the, the main one uh, of the show tonight, uh, we'll we get onto this subject, is Joel Glazer the real problem at Man United? Uh, is he solely to blame? 
are there other people in this? <laughs> James is nodding furiously. With, with <laughs> the Shut the camera around, please. Is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's yeah, that's movie was getting drunk aggressively as you were yeah, trying to guys are doing the straw like <laughs> yeah no <laughs> when I walk into the gym uh, in, in a few weeks time and you're chewing the straw like that <laughs> eating, it's on leg day eating, eating the shaker the protein <laughs> shaker I'm <laughs> straight back out mate same round <laughs> um, uh, after comments uh, on, on on talk sport from from journalist uh, Jason Burt Garth um he, he said he singled out Joel Glazer as the main problem. M many factors, uh, even even down to little ones like decision making and them having to wait uh, a, nine, yeah, ten hours to give a, a, a short answer. Logistical things we don't even think about. Um, because if you look at other ownerships and, and, and the structure they've got there, if you look at Arsenal, they've got um, Edu... Um, whether they people think he's doing a good job there, they've got Eno, Edu, they've got Vinay, um, they've got people in, in place, and they've got a, a manager in it, Mikel Arteta, who's taking the reins like a, a, not so much as a head coach, which people are, he's more of a manager. Um, if you look at uh, Liverpool, they've got FSG and they've got their structure there. But at Man United, it seems like Joel Glazer wants to take make the big main decisions, um, but and it's impacting Man United. Is he the main issue? Should they be setting up a structure there? Should there be someone who's actually who's managing the club from from England? Are they not doing it properly? What what, what is what is the problem you see? Well, first starts right away. I always look at the man at the top when there's problems. Now, if the players on the pitch aren't doing well, I don't blame the players. Like I, I say, you can't sack 22 players. It has to be the manager in, at mm -hmm. the end of the day. If the club isn't running well as an operation, I have to look at the... He's, C, he's CEO, isn't he? He's the, the, whatever, he's the leader of the club. Whatever mm -hmm. job title he's given himself. Uh, yeah, so yeah, the problems do. They do realise him. The biggest one I found with that, that little interview was the madness of the tiny decisions having to go through him. Like, mm -hmm. and having to wait, like you said, seven, eight, nine hours for him to wake up in America and get back to, like, I'm guessing it sounds like things like tickets for, for, fa for uh, players, friends and families and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It sounds mental. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Listen, he would, I reckon he would say to you, since he took over, he's won five Premier Leagues, a Champions League, four League Cups, an FA Cup and Europa League in 16 years. And, On, and how can you argue with that? On paper, you can't. But the thing is, you've got to remember, he came in in 2006 so he had the bones of a quality football team, well-run organisation and everything. He had Fergie till 2013. Those five Premier Leagues, Champions League, four league, or three of the League Cups, and that's it, were all won in that era. Since Fergie's left, nine years ago, we've won a Europa League, an FA Cup and a League Cup. You can argue with that. You can mm -hmm. say that it was the glory, of the greatness of Alex Ferguson and what David Gill and before him, Martin Edwards, had left behind in the club structure. And what this fellow was saying on the interview is exactly right. He's just let it rot, basically. And I, for one, am one of those fans who was blinded by the fact that we get quite a bit of money from him for transfers, mm. which is another thing he said. So, yeah, I will lay the blame firmly at his feet for all of this. Him and the rest of the Glazers family. Okay, okay. Uh, what, what's, what's your feeling on the situation, Lauren? Is he the main problem? Should we be pointing the fingers at other people? I think the club stinks from the top, and he is right at the top. So I do think he is the, the main problem. Um, as we were saying about decisions being made, the smallest, most trivial things are going through him. This is a man who has no clue about football at mm -hmm. all. He does great things in America. Mm -hmm. Granted, you know, Tom Brady came out and said, you know, the great Glazers are the greatest because they know that sport. They come in to English football not knowing a single thing, came in at the greatest era and had it easy as Gar said when Sir Alex was there Sir Alex has left and we've just plummeted and he doesn't know what to do he has no clue how to run this football club if he wants to because devil's advocate yeah you know they've given us massive deals they, we got Cristiano Ronaldo back you know we it took us two seasons we got Sancho arguably you can say that they do back managers but that's nothing when you don't know how to run the club from the top and you don't know what to do when it starts going wrong 
and he mm -hmm. doesn't and he doesn't know how to he doesn't know how to rectify what is happening at this club. Yeah. Um James, it, it, Lauren says he doesn't know how to run a club. They, they, I'm sure there's owners that they want these football teams, they want these things as their toys, but they put people in place to run the club. Is there not someone in there that should be making some of these smaller decisions? Is it, is it an ego thing that he needs to to, to make the, the smallest of decisions? What's your thoughts on the situation? Um, the greatest leaders all delegate, mate. They mm. all delegate and pass on responsibility to those who know better than them. It's very egotistical to think that you know better than someone that's a specialist in a particular area, especially when that sport isn't even the main isn't one of the main sports in the country that you were brought up in so you don't really understand it like you do your own sport which in fairness you've created a, a winning dynasty or you're on your way to creating a winning dynasty and um, i don't really have anything positive to say about the glazers to be honest um with regards to you know oh but they came in to take over a winning team i just i don't even buy into all that like was it easier to take over manchester city now or 20 years ago because I can bet your bottom mm. dollar you'd say it'd be easier to take over Manchester City now because they are a successful winning team. And it's easier to stay at the top than get to the top in this mm. era of football where it takes so much money. Yeah. I'll also say this as well. I argued with someone about this a while ago because I said our club died in 2005 and they said we'd won numerous... Like Garth reeled off a list of trophies. Oh, we've won this since 2005. We didn't die in 2005. We've won a Champions League and several Premier Leagues since then. I turned around and said, listen, touch wood, if someone got diagnosed with cancer tomorrow and they lived a good life for eight years, nine years, they lived a good life, but it was terminal and they died in nine years' time. Did they start to die in 2022 or did they start to die in 2031? Mm. Because at the end of the day, you start, it's when it starts, right? That mm. cancer of our football club, we rot from the head, right? So when they took over in 2005 and when they became a majority shareholder and then were able to take us off the stock exchange, that's when our football club died. I don't care what we won after that. That was the magic of Sir Alex Ferguson, the magic of David Gill that kept us going since 2000, until 2013. The Glazers killed our football club. They now say that they can't go and like, oh, we're going to set up supporters fan club meetings and all this. Oh, we'll get to a game. Well, I see you. I see your family at the F1. I don't see you at Old Trafford. There'd be a large queue of us at Old Trafford waiting to speak to you, Joel. Just come on down, have a chat. I'll get you a pie. <laughs> it, listen, I think that's if, why. If the card machines are working, I'll buy you a pie, mate. If I think that's why it's not going. Down and give us one for free. <laughs> Honestly, like, come down, mate. I'll, I'll meet you outside the East Stand. We'll have a nice hot dog. It's fine. Like, come, we'll have a chat about the state of the club. The club that you've <laughs> effed up since 2005. You and your family have completely fucked it, mate. The club I love, like, honestly, I've got nothing positive to say about them, mate. I could rant about the Glazers until tomorrow night so i'm gonna stop but they're an absolute joke mate and they need to piss off out the club no 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 don't worry james we're gonna keep on going 100 percent. Right. i'm feeding off this energy you're loving it um <laughs> golf can man united under this ownership get back to the top i just first of all can i just say i love the fact none of us are calling it football we're calling it their sport that's wonderful because there's only one football. There's only one football is over here. Um, no, nah. no, no, because exactly what James is exactly what we're all saying. We've seen nothing, nothing that would suggest that this ownership model that they've got can take us places now. Like, like I said, I was semi blinded by the money they gave us, to be fair. I really was. Like, but when you really think about it, there's been no investment in the in the stadium, there's been no investment in the like, like um, James was saying, they do all this thing for Miami, for Tampa. They're out in the community building, literally building houses and stuff for, for, for those residents, you know what I mean, to build that atmosphere up. They, they do nothing over here for us. So, no. Will they sell? No. They're businessmen. That's what they bought this club for. And they make a lot of money off Manchester United. A lot of money. And that's what it comes down to in the end. They are, ne like, they are never selling. Not until that silly offer from someone comes in, you know what I mean? Like someone drops a four billy or five billy on it or something, you know what I mean? It's like mental. They ain't selling. Their annual yeah. revenue they make of us pays for temper. That, that's literally how it works almost, it feels like. like you know what I mean? So, no. Nah. Listen, we've won a few things with this ownership model. It's football. So, a good manager and a few new good players possibly could take us to a trophy. But long-term success? No, I can't see it, mate. I really can't. 
Lauren, do, 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 you, do you see? Well, not do you see? How 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 did Man United get back to the top under this ownership? If if it, if it feels like it, it's it's a dead end, or what do, what do they need to do? As we've all said, we need to delegate decisions to people who know exactly what they're doing and exactly what they're talking about. But as James said, they're too narcissistic, they're too egotistical to ever do that, and that's the problem. There is there's answers to these problems. But the Glazers will never, ever do it because that then, it, it lowers their pride and it lowers their ego because they have to, you know, give that, give those um, responsibilities to other people who are do then doing their job, which, but it's their club. It's, they just think they know best and they will continue to think they know best even when it's not working because they're too proud to admit defeat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. <sighs> James. <laughs> so 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 what's what's the next step? Like because as as, as Garth said, are they ever gonna sell? Don't say so, it, mate. So so what so what so what do you do as fans? Uh protest, 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 get out. So is that is that the way forward? Do you feel like that's the way forward, yeah? I don't know, right? Because it's really hard. Because all I see is like people on Twitter saying, "Oh, you people in Manchester, all you need to do is stop going to the games and don't buy the merchandise and do all this." And and the Glazers will go because you're speaking to their pockets. It's like, listen, mate, if I give up my season ticket, it'll be bought by a tourist who goes and spends a hundred quid in the mega store that therefore goes and puts more money in the Glazers' pockets. So yeah. that that attitude is absolutely clueless, right? You're also mm -hmm. speaking into someone's emotions, right? I've been I've been going to watch this club for 26 years, so you. You telling me to stop is pretty goddamn hard to do like I, it's part of my routine like i love this football. i don't love football anymore i really really don't i hate the game it's become but i love manchester united because i always have and i always will so trying to tell me to stop that is not going to happen yeah. on how we stop it like i don't know like i've said maybe a consortium maybe a daft offer something to happen to get them out mate because like we said they're not going to delegate. Smart people delegate. Egotistical people try and do something themselves, knowing that they can't. It takes a smart person to admit when someone else can do a better job and let them do a better job. And they're just not capable of that. We are the cash cow, as Garth said, for the Tampa Bay Bucks. And at the end of the day, that's their little pipe dream. I've got no doubt in my mind that they care as much about the Bucks as we do about Manchester United. And that's all fine. But they're playing with this thing I love. I don't care about them. They're treating this thing I love as like some joke that they can just pick up, throw. And Garth talked about all this money they spent. Our money, mate. Our mm. fucking money. Like, not mm -hmm. their money. The yeah. debt's 495 million. It's our money. Stop thinking that they've spent money. Roman Abramovich spent money. Sheikh Mansour spent money. The Glazers did not spend money. They used loans to buy the club. They've not paid it back. Our debt's going up. Mm -hmm. don't, don't lose sight of that, mate. Please don't. Oh, no, no, I've, I've just got back into it. I lost sight of it. That was the problem. As I was saying, that, that interviewer said a lot of us have lost sight of the fact because of the money we get. And I was one of those fans until recently. It was it was the European Super League for me that I, Kieran was here. Yeah. Like, I didn't watch Man United for the rest of that season. I didn't watch UEFA Cup final. I refused because obviously I'm in Southampton. I don't go games that'd be different. But I, I, just, I was so done with Man United and football after that. Yeah. It, it, was, it was over for me. And it was only coming back and doing this that got me back into watching football and stuff to be quite honest with you like this season because I was done I was done with them but like uh, two three days after that right they came out with the fan consortium thing, yeah, yeah. right and that was literally as a straight reaction to that I had the chance to speak to someone who sits on that board right she's one of the six or seven people she's a season ticket holder for the men and the women at, at United and uh, and I asked her a question I basically said I was like was that a direct response from the Glazers? Have you spoke to them? Was that a direct response to the fallout from the Super League? And she said yes. And he admitted that. And he full on admitted that that was a straight, direct response to them committing to the Super League and then having to withdraw. So they knew that they were just doing that to try and get back on side with the fans. Unfortunately mm -hmm. for them, a lot of our fan base hopefully is smart and sees through that, mate, because they care about the football club. Manchester United Football Club as much as I care about the books. Couldn't give two shits, mate. <laughs> yeah. So so as fans, how, how how do you have that balance? Because it, it sounds like it's painful. So how do you how do you have that balance of supporting your club 
but you want to go down there and protest, which is going to potentially put a bad atmosphere into the ground. Like, how, Lauren, how, how do you keep that balance? What, what so, should you do yourself? I, I did, I went to the, the protest um, before the Liverpool game. Um, I have my season ticket, and I think season tickets are a drop in the ocean from what they make. Um, out of the club, I think, especially shirt sales, they're a huge one because they're all over the world. I don't buy shirts from Manchester United anymore because although it's only 60 quid of my money, but that just adds because of the amount they get from um, shirt sales alone. Um, I'll, can, you know, well, I, I will, like James said, I'll buy my season ticket because if not, then... As he said, it's a hundred pound ticket instead to a tourist who will go and spend two hundred pound in the mega store. Mm -hmm. It's it's not a, a, the season tickets are like I said a drop in the ocean in comparison to other areas that they receive money from the club. So I think it's that balance of knowing when to spend, like give them the money and when not. And I think if we can protest, we can. Do I think protests really make a difference? I don't know because I think he is so like Joel Great Glazer is so arrogant. He probably sits there and laughs because he knows that everyone will still be back at the games the next week, mm. and and that that's that's the problem. It's it's a bit of a catch twenty two of what we should do and how we should deal with it. Yeah, it's true. It's very very it's true. It's a massive catch twenty two. It's a yeah. massive catch. Everything you're saying is the truth. If any of you give up your tickets, a tourist goes there and gives them more yeah. money. Yeah, like what can you do in the end? It's a matter for all of us, you know what I mean. Like, ask James, you I've stopped buying football shirts and so on and so forth, spending money on merch and gear. And I'll tell you, I was used to be a beast with it. Like, I'd buy everything <laughs> that come out, you know what I mean? Free, free shirts a year, all the, all the books. You know, I've literally got free Schmeichel autobiographies for no, like, three different ones from different eras for no reason. You know, it's the same yeah, book, it's still same player, same cover. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a different cover, that's all. But yeah, no, nah, it's awful, man. It's awful. You couldn't even be sly with that. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> you <nugget. laughs> hey, man's been feasting yes, all day. Yes, there you go. Man's been yeah. feasting all day. Let's go. Been fasting, yeah. haven't you, know? Go on. I've been Top fasting man. since four, four, you go. four this morning. So, forgive me, guys. Forgive me. <laughs> is it just the whole <laughs> fridge now, is it? Is it everything in the fridge, Nathan? Just like, out. <laughs> just, uh, just everything. <laughs> Cheap day. We've got like chips and uh, burger and and, and yeah, Well, don't worry, mate. We're gonna work that off when we get you in that gym. <laughs> hey, yeah, James. Yeah. I don't yeah, mind. Yeah, you, there, James. Yeah. Me, you, that. James. We've got it all. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting involved. Don't worry. Yeah. Someone make sure there's an ambulance yeah. outside that gym on that day, please. Just just in case, you know. Yeah, I've got one, I've got one in each <laughs> 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 Ex-professional footballer and absolute Jim Savage down there, like, <laughs> yeah. So John Samblins is going to be busy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, Nathan. I'm going to ask you the Glazers. Um, Joel Glazer has been been pinpointed as the, a major issue at Manchester United. Um, how how do how do they fix it? You as a fan, uh, you you want to watch your team. But it's, it's that catch twenty two. We've you, you want to be positive because the players will feed off of that. But in the background, you know that things aren't going to change while you've got uh, Joel uh, Joel Glazer in charge or the Glazers in charge. So, so, what do you do as a fan? Oh, I don't know, but obviously I had the privilege of listening to you or give your 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 views as well. So it was nice um, for me. To be fair, I don't know anything about that side of the game, uh, the people who are in charge and what they're doing. Um, and, and how it's going to affect us a lot. But, you know, when you hear people talking about the fact that they've not invested in the infrastructure, like the, the, the stadium's getting old, everyone else is overtaking us. Our training ground, OK, we did update it not too long ago. Um, but you know what I mean? So when you, when you look at the other big, big teams, they're far ahead of us in so many different areas now. And, and they've got the structure in place. So when we're still talking about a director of football and all of that, you know, these guys have had, had them in place for years and, and, and they've seen the results. So I can see all that side of things. But how you fix it, we've just got to copy the model of these other guys. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's, seriously, Man City, Liverpool, that's the model. Simple as that. And if we can, we can do that, then we can start seeing some improvements on the pitch. I think we've gone a long way 
with the Ten, Ten Hag appointment because we know that should be a longer term investment. They should be saying, listen, we're going to give you a few seasons, not just like next season. And if you're not right at the top, you know, you're going to get out. Otherwise, there's no point. It's just going to be a, a, a circle again and again and again. And no one's going to succeed here. He, he, we know what he can do. We know his credentials. We know what he can do with young players, bring them through. Let him bring all the players that he wants in. Let him get all the players he wants out. And let's get some structure around here, you know, and make it happen. Uh, uh, as a player, if, if there were protests going around at your club, would you would that would that have any effect on you on your game, do you feel? Nah, not really. Um, the only time when it would affect is um, what I would say is when you're playing and you're losing games and then the fans get on your back because you're already low on confidence mm. and then the fans are on your back as well. You know, like you start a game, you're kind of okay until a goal goes in. Then you're finished. Like the t You've seen it happen many times before. When teams are struggling at the bottom, they'll come out all fighting. As soon as they let a goal in, oh my God, it's happened again, you know? And mm. and that's what happened. So it can affect you with the with the fan side of things. But um, in terms of the protest against like the board and stuff, I don't care. I didn't care. I, I, not that I've been involved in that, but I wouldn't care at all. Like what's going on off the pitch? If you get, I mean, what they're talking about. I'm just focusing on what's going on the pitch because if your your focus is off the pitch, you're finished, aren't you? Really. Mm, so yeah. <laughs> you got to concentrate on the job in hand. So that's all right. I used to do, and that's all I remember others doing as well. Very, very true. Um, Lauren, the, 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 one of the other things that came out in in the interview with uh, Jason Burt was that um, Ralph Ragnick doesn't yet know his job. Now, with with a new manager coming in, the, the guy's already been offered, a, a, a given a two-year deal after he leaves uh, his managerial role at the end of the season. Is it not a bit crazy that he doesn't know his role that he's going to be in come the end of the season? It is an absolute shambles because how is anyone supposed to prepare for a new de uh, new job when they have no clue what they need to prepare for? Because he could be right now, while still in the managerial role, working out what changes need to be made. Mm -hmm. If that, but if he doesn't know where he's going to stand, he doesn't know what responsibilities he's going to be taking. Therefore, anything he thinks of now. Could be made redundant when he moves to a different position that he thought than he thought he was going to go. So I just think it's an absolute shambles and it's an embarrassment and it completely shows just the lack of professionalism in the club. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, very true, James. Should it not be the other way round? Ragnick's in there and and then Ten Hag comes in and he has to work with Ragnick. Still, it should be that way round. Uh, should be, yeah, but it's not going to be, is it? Because we don't operate how we should. And this this job that Ranyik's apparently going to get if he ever gets offered it, I might apply for it, to be honest, like working six, <laughs> working six days a month, not really going to be listened to, like don't really know what your CV or experience you need for it. Like <laughs> sign me up for six days a month, mate. I'm all for that. Like give me all the money. Uh, it's just crazy. Like it's just it reeks of the whole, remember uh, when Ralph Ranyuk got asked about Darren Fletcher and he was like, I'm not really sure what he does at the club. And it's like, <laughs> oh, God, and, it was... and it's like, and you're saying that about someone that's integral, apparently, that's uh... a technical director at your club and he doesn't know what the job is. Like the manager, albeit an interim one, doesn't know what the job is of the technical director. And I'm not surprised he doesn't because he doesn't even know what his own job is for the next two years, mate. And unfortunately, because of these players, he's not been able to do his own job for the last six months or whatever either. So it's just been like the club, mate. I... I'm running out of words to describe it, honestly. Like, every week, I, like, I have to go somewhere and speak about this club, and it's like, genuinely, do I have to? Like, I used to look forward to speaking about Manchester United, and now I'm just like, oh, it's just another poorly ran, absolute shambolic evening in the life that is Manchester United. Mm, yeah, very, very true. Goff, like, Ten Hag's coming into this job. Ralph Rangnick's meant to be there as a consultancy role or I don't know what the role... Surely he's looking at that like, what, what, what's going on here? <laughs> We're all looking at it like that, every one of us, and Ten Hag's got to take that club over. So he's definitely giving that the full magnifying glass, I hope. You know what I mean? Because if I was Ten Hag, I'd be looking at our club very seriously because he is the most, one of the most, what, like, well 
thought of managers out there that ain't at a big club at the moment. He could pretty much go anywhere apart from Man City, Liverpool. You know what I mean? Like, so he should, like, he really needs to think about it if he wants to take this on because it's going to be a nightmare. What we've been saying all evening, you know, I think one of the best quotes out of that interview was him saying that Man United need to start employing best in class for the jobs that they're best suited for. And we've all mm. said that they don't. Like, yeah, he's going to be looking at it like, what is going on here? You know what I mean? Ralph Ragnick don't know what Darren Fletcher does. Ralph Ragnick don't know what he does. Like, <laughs> what, 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 so what, is he going to be my boss? Is Am I going to have to take direction I from him? Believe, like, the, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> what the bit about the Ralph Ragnar not knowing what his job was? Go on, go. Can you get my phone, please? <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> Classic. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, as I say, yeah, it's a madness, isn't it? If Ragnick don't know what Arthur's team does, he doesn't know what his position is going to be afterwards. Exactly what Lawrence saying. How can he set up for his future, like role at this club? How can he be setting it up for our new manager, which is what he was meant to be doing for six months? You know what I mean? Mm. He come in. I said, you know, I said, like two weeks after he come, and he and he said that he gave a report saying that Shaw, Maguire, and Ramsdale were not good enough for this club. That was yeah, in January. Yeah. Tran- that was in the January like transfer was, window. It felt like that's what his role was going to be. So it was yeah. like, okay. Okay, these players do need to fix up around him because yeah. because they, he's he's going to be deciding their future. Yeah, and but not just that, nothing's been done. We haven't signed any replacements for him in January, and we haven't moved any of them on. You know, what I mean, I presume there was more than just those three players on that list because of, if I got the chance to go in there and give him a list of what who should go, it's going to be a couple of pages of A4. So, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's a joke. It's look, it all comes back to what we said in the beginning about Joel Glazer. This club is just so piss poorly run it is a joke really isn't it you know if it wasn't so painful to me personally i'd be crying with laughter if this was Arsenal or someone else we'd all be laughing at them you know what i mean like any other club but it's not it's our club and we are in serious trouble so you could have picked kid. any other team <laughs> now you're, you're, you're there kid. i'm looking at you any mate ain't I? you know like, like... <laughs> any other team you know i've got an eject button I, no, do st- pod, I do this pod on my own. I'm old <laughs> enough to remember. You're I'm old crazy. enough to remember when we were rivals, mate. All right, you were the, Arsenal was one of the first rivals I had proper. So it's always going to be Arsenal the enemy to me, mate. So. Composure, composure. All right, all right. Um, uh, Ralph Reckneck doesn't know what his role is. Ten Hag's coming into a job where he's meant to. I mean, he, surely he must know Ralph Reckneck. Surely there's got to be some. Is, is Ten Hag the man that's going to come in and restructure and reshape Man United for a managerial role? He's going to have to because I think I'm hoping that the rumours that he, he's not coming in unless he gets the you know the opportunity to actually take charge of everything, then we're going to be all right because that's the problem. You see, some of the managers they got their hands stuck behind their backs. You know, they come in and they can't make decisions. The players are coming in and they're not their players. You know, they can't get rid of players, they can't bring in players. So it makes it very, very tough. And for me, you look at the Ragnick situation, it's, it's, it's crazy because how can he not know what is. <laughs> well, what does Fletcher do? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> hey, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes people are too honest. <laughs> you know what he's like? He's the honest guy already, and he's getting taught how to not be honest, you know, like play the proper card. But yeah, for him to say that, you know, he just does the warm up, he does this and does that. Yeah, he's good. Whatever his position is, that he's just good at what he's doing. And um, this is weird, you know, but we also know he's not been told something because of what he's doing at the moment. It's not his fault, but the results are not good at all. It's, it, it, you know, even like what he stamped in the side earlier on, we started to see some changes. For me, we started to see loads of chances and no goals. Now we're not seeing chances anymore. Now we're not seeing that kind of football anymore. What's happened? What's mm-hmm. changed? I don't get it. We need to be back to that level. And then I, I was saying, surely we're going to score soon. You've got Cristiano Ronaldo, Bruno, Pogba. You've got players who can finish. So at the end of the day, can't carry on forever that you're going to have 10, 20 chances and not score. So it's just really puzzling that we're just not able to like fight for this top four. It's really annoying. Yeah, very true. Um, okay. 
little little less little little more light hearted side of things. Because James, uh, James looks like he's going to pop yeah. a vein over there. So, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll move Let's on. Let's get off the glazers. <laughs> Let's get off the glazers. Yeah. He's going to punish you even more in the gym. Every time you talk about him, there's another well, you session. Mentioned another set. Day. You said there's another day. step coming, bro. Yeah. <laughs> At least have it in chest day or something. But yeah, we, we, can, do, we can do chest day. It's all right. <laughs> don't go easy on him. No, I don't want to see. I want to see half. We're doing all over. We're doing all over. Plus, David's involved now, so I want to see. I want to see him sweat as well. I'm gonna be, I'll be oh, fine. That's, that's going to be my motivation. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Beat Nathan. So long. Maybe uh, Beat Nathan. Uh, early May in it. Get it in your diary. Yeah, yeah. Get it. It's early in May. there. It's in there. Train threading it already. I can see what he's doing. I've seen all them leg, them leg weights he's doing. Yeah, like, yeah, and man. He's on, he's on the video one forever as well. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Just making me feel bad. <laughs> right. That's all I'm trying to do. Like yeah, but we never see him walking out, do we? We never see him walking out. Crawling <laughs> out. Down, that's what he's really yeah. doing. He's crawling yeah. out. I yeah? am. Someone I am. Else, someone's carrying him out. <laughs> yeah? That's exactly how it should be. Exactly <laughs> how it should be. I'm giving it all of that, yeah, because this is my defence mechanism. I can't help it. I'm trying to stop, but I can't. Kieran mess- messaged me. <laughs> he messaged me and he was like, "Right, we're gonna hit a workout." I was like, "Yeah, it's fine." He's like, "Oh yeah, but you're gonna go hard." I'm like, "No, honestly, mate, it'll be fine." He's like, "He's like, don't give me that. That's what I used to tell people when people ask me." To tell me. <laughs> and I know it's bull. He's like, "I know it's bull. I know you really, know- I know you really know it's not gonna be okay. Stop lying to me. I'm like, it's fine, mate. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it'll be fine. Stop saying Just it's fine." Quick 20. Just a 20 reps on this one. Oh, I thought you said 20 minutes. Yeah. Either way. Either way. Either way. All right, all right. So, James, um, yes. there's talk that, that Man United are going to uh, modernise Old Trafford, bring it up to up to date, um, yeah. add some much-needed investment. Is, 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 it, is, it, is it really needed? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyone that stepped foot in that ground uh, in recent times and stepped foot in any other ground in the Premier League or even in the world uh, knows that it's one of the most outdated stadiums around, mate. It's it's terrible. Like it's obviously I, I love it as a ground, right? Because it's where I've grown up watching football and it's my favourite place to go. And walking down the Warwick Road or some at Busby Way is like my favourite thing to do. I've got so many memories of it. Um, but once you step foot in the ground, mate, it's a joke. Like I, I made a joke before, but literally we couldn't get a pie earlier on at half time during a game. Like the contact list was down, and it was like we can't we can't get a pie or a beer. And like <laughs> it's just a joke. Like you go to the to- the toilets are a joke. There's no signal within about a mile of the ground, mate. Honestly, yeah. like yeah, as soon so as you annoying. step off the tram or anything, you literally can't get any signal anywhere. Like. <laughs> It's just, honestly, the whole place is so, so outdated. It's absolutely awful. Like, the only ground, like, Goodison Park's not great. Stamford Bridge isn't great. And Old Trafford, the three of them are, like, a disgrace. But you look at, like, the Olympic Stadium and then Spurs's and the Emirates. And there's so many grounds of the newer grounds that, yeah, they may not have the, the history and stuff of Old Trafford, but those clubs are trying to create a new dynasty elsewhere. I'm not, I'm not for knocking down Old Trafford at all. Like I have too much history there, yeah. and I, I, I need that football ground there. I have too, too many memories of it. Um, but we definitely need to update it. You can't extend it all the way around because of the train track. But there's definitely modernisation that can be done. Um, you mentioned before, Kieran, about about how City and Liverpool are ran. If you go down to East Manchester and you look at Sport City as a complex and Eastlands mm-hmm. as a complex, a play it's, it, it's incredible. Unreal. Like, oh, it's it's abs- unreal. The setup from head to head, like, honestly, it's absolutely unreal. Like, yeah. What they've done in the last 15, 17 years compared to what we've done in the last 17 years is absolutely like levels, mate. We've fallen mm-hmm. off a cliff. They've shot up into space. And mm-hmm. now what once was Man United up here and City down there is now like the gaps almost even bigger the other way. It's mental. Yeah, no, it is. Uh, the, the, what what Man City are doing uh, around the area as well, building up the local area. Yeah, um, the grounds unbelievable. The training ground is is yeah, stunning. It yeah. is honestly, it is ridiculous. Um, the mini stadium in next to the stadium for the for the women's team. It's it, that that's how you do it. It's seriously yeah. how you do it. Um, Lauren, you're you're a regular there. What what do you think? What do you think about the the upgrade of Man United? Massively needed, yeah. Absolutely, it's falling to pieces. It's leaking everywhere. It's as James said. I'd never, I'd never want to see Old Trafford 
get knocked down or moved you know there was rumors of them them wanting to do that and that, that honestly broke my heart just thinking about the rumors um because i've been going there since i was a kid as well and we just need it all it needs is an upgrade that's all it needs it does it, it just just refurbish it just fix the leaks you know just modernize it slightly yeah if we want to make it bigger let's make it bigger but just just don't change the heart of old trafford just bring it into the modern world yeah freshen it up uh, nathan how, how 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 devastating would it have been if they would have knocked down Old Trafford to build again, it's, it's not what they need to do, is it? No, no, no. There's too much history there. Like everyone's saying, like when you go by there, you just you just see the same thing every time you go by, and it's still something that you look at with awe. So I don't want to see that happen, you know. But obviously, we do need to improve. I'm, I'm just trying to think in my head how the hell would we improve? But you know, without moving to another stadium while they're doing something up or whatever. But we'll, you just got to. They got to improvise. They have got to figure out a way of doing it. Um, you start by making the pitch a bit more safe when you come off it. As soon as you come off the pitch, you're on the side. You're about to fall off. And How dangerous is that brick wall? Yeah, What's that brick brick work? Work? <laughs> who, who, who done that? All the players on knees. That's where, that's where they got the term "keep it on the island." I think it yeah. came from, from there. That's what everyone says in football. But bloody hell, man, it is dangerous as hell. Yeah. Look at I think Rambasaka finished. Finished the, the, one of them games off in the in the in the, in the board, didn't he? Yeah. Lots of the players have finished off in the boards down at, at, at Old Trafford. To be fair, so they could start with that, and then uh, and then you know move on to the, the sand. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Uh, Garth, as as a as a even a a development thing, a money thing, a business thing, surely. The, you gotta have your you gotta have your your building looking up to scratch. You can't. It's it, old and, 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 and yes, there's some heritage. Yes, there's a, a bit of character, but this is different, surely. Um, I mean, the building can look old as long as it isn't old inside. Yeah. You know, like that it can look old. Traffic doesn't need to be renovated outside because that is the theatre of dreams. We all know it. We all, we all love it. Inside the facilities, the actual, the oper- the the running of the the ground itself and what's in there needs to be updated and changed. But I've I've been fearing this day because I know what's coming. It's typical Man United. Initially, it's, it, it isn't even like there's just sort of exploratory committee, isn't it, to discuss what could possibly be done in the future for the stadium. But what that really means is they're going to come out and say, we can't do anything with this stadium. We've got to move. And we're going to be calling it the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Stadium because they can't get that <laughs> sweet, sweet <laughs> revenue from Old Trafford, mate. They can't rename Old Trafford. They can. That's one thing they could never get away with. So yeah. they, they're missing out on what? I think it's about 50, 60 million. The Chevrolet year. Stadium. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? And that, I'm I'm scared sick that's what's coming. I, I've got a bad feeling it is what's coming as well. And so what would happen is the fans will revolt and say no. So the Glazers will just be like, yeah, sweet. Well, you can have this whole stadium then. There's not much we can do to it. We'll give you some new toilets. We'll give you some new turnstiles. What else do that you want? That is what we need. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. bloody turnstiles <laughs> yeah, are a yeah, nightmare. Yeah, exactly. oh. But that's what we'll get for them. That's what we'll get. Or it's a new stadium. I can't see them redeveloping Old Trafford. I can't yeah. see them. It's not worth the money to them. They make so yeah. much money out of it at the moment, like we keep coming back though, and they can't put naming rights on it. It but, ain't worth yeah, it to them. Yeah, and, and and as you see in, in America, they, they pop them up all over the place. But we, you do, you see them... And you see that the complexes they build, absolutely amazing. Like the buildings are ridiculous, but they are named like the the, the coin Center. base, yeah. the coin, but yeah, the Staples Center, the coin base stadium, the coin base arena, stuff like that. So it is a bit. <laughs> it's taking the history out of the club, and this some of the Lakers have changed now, aren't they? All the Everett's, Yeah, they were the staple the centre. The Lakers were the staple of all the Everett's, yeah. <laughs> James, thank you for joining us tonight. It's, <laughs> no! it's, been, it's, it's been happening over here for a while. It's been, it's James it's been can happening. no longer be with us anymore. Um, great guests. Uh, I, I love them to bits. But, um, oh, he's, he's managed to get back on. <laughs> it's been happening over here for a while, right, hasn't it? Strike one. Strike one. <laughs> Was it Bolton? Was, that, was Bolton the first ones with the Reebok Stadium? Yeah, and then so. Middlesbrough with the yeah. BT Selnit Stadium. Like it's been going on since the nineties, <laughs> but yeah. you can't but do Old Trafford. That, those exactly, yeah. that needed it. Yeah. So do we. <laughs> <laughs> I want to read. Like, you can't knock Old Trafford down. Wedge between us. 
Yeah, right. they can't knock Old Trafford down, but yeah, they're not going to redevelop it. Like I say, it ain't worth the money do to you, them. Do you think they haven't done it because they've um, we haven't been winning things to make that extra money uh, in the Champions League and winning the league and all of that? Do you think I just think they don't care. Uh, Sorry, yeah, where like, getting their money from? Like, where, where do you think they get their money from? But are you not? You know, we always in debt and stuff. I don't know this, so I'm asking you guys if you understand it better than me because. We're in debt, and then we're still buying players for like over a hundred and something million every year. We're spending hundred and something million, and then we're going more in debt and more in debt. So, if we're going to go and upgrade the stadium, does that mean that we won't be upgrading the players for certain seasons, like Arsenal had? You know, when they had that, and then Liverpool had the same situation as well. Is that what's happening with us? Or so you, you, well, you've got to you've got to balance the books, right? That's what financial fair play is apparently about. So it yeah. it does have some effect, but basically what you've got is the Glazers loaned a load of money to basically fund the club, right? Now, when you take out a loan or anything, that you compound interest on that loan, right? So over time, you the debt grows and grows and grows. So last year it was four hundred and fifty three million last year, and now it's four hundred and ninety five million at the end of two thousand and twenty one. So we're four hundred and ninety five million pounds in debt. Now, I wouldn't have a massive issue with that with regards to football clubs are in debt, that's fine. However, if my business was losing £495 million, I would personally not be taking £11 million in dividends out of the club at that time. I would be reinvesting it into my business to try and turn my business into a successful, profitable one. And that's why a lot of the fan base have an issue with this absolute poison that's in our club and that take, that has control of our club because they don't care. They take out when they should be putting in. You've got people like, you can talk about money and not injecting money. Sheikh Mansour has injected, what, over a billion pounds into Manchester City of his own money. We've got owners that have taken out 500 million pounds of our money. That's a net difference of £1.5 billion. And we see that difference on the pitch in the last 15 years. And that is why one team is going through the roof and one team has fallen through the floor. And it is as simple as like the money's just not being invested. Yes, you can say £80 million for Harry Maguire, £50 million for wan all this kind of stuff, £75 million for Sancho. At the end of the day, they don't invest it in the right areas. They don't delegate in the right areas. They take money out of the club and they need to piss off out of the club. I, I don't. I, 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 I hate. I hate. Like I hate the Blazers, man. I hate it. I've had this rant a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> no, it's good. No, it's yeah, good. it's fair. You need it's to get it out true. as well. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And I think uh, 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 what 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 um what the what what you, the, what you're talking about, Nathan, as well, is is a bit of what Garth was saying earlier. It's they they have to invest in the team, otherwise they're full right off a cliff and there'd be no coming back. And that's the danger of Man United. I mean, there's, there's massive clubs out there that have dropped off a cliff from from, from big positions, from high positions. We've, we've seen yeah. them go tumbling down throughout the years. PSG used to be a top club, got re- got re- re- like relegated, came back up, got bought out again. Not saying it's going to happen to Man United, but there's a danger if you don't invest in the team and because you're investing in the stadium. So that what they will probably do is name a stand. It's called the Old Trafford something something stadium. Yeah. So, yeah. so it will be a, a balance of both. Um, whether that works or not, we, we will see. We will see. Yeah, Mike, Mike actually tried that with St James's Park, didn't he? And obviously, it lasted about he, a week. When but he the, did. The, in the end, it was yeah. called uh, the the JD Sports. JD Sports at St James's Park. Sports Direct. Sports Direct. Sports Direct. Sorry. Yeah. Sports Direct. Sports Direct. Yeah. Sports Direct. Yeah. Sports Direct. Yeah. Sports Direct. It's so weird when the, yeah. when the proper names of stadiums just completely change. Like, what? Yeah, but that's why. Yeah, it didn't last long, did it? it didn't last long either like, because oh. the fans. That's what I mean. They cannot do that, Old Trafford. They cannot. There's n- of all the things they can get away with, renaming Old Trafford, even slapping a sponsor above the name Old Trafford. Like there'd be absolute like that, that weirdly, hard. yeah. Like that would be. Yeah, they might call it like the, the 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 I don't know the something theater of dreams. Oh god, right? don't just, just 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 oh, because god. that sounds very that that's very that's very. Oh yeah, I can see it. I can, can see, see it, it, mate. Yeah, can yeah, see yeah it? American. Yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. It's very American. The Spotify theater of dreams. Yeah, right? yeah, you know, yeah. Oh, I rarely get Spotify. The round trees, the round trees theater of dreams. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Could, could happen, could happen. All right, all right, all right. So, I mean, great pod so far tonight, but we're coming towards the end of it. But I could not do a pod without discussing May United's next fixture. 
So, I say this every week. <laughs> Scarf. No must win, yeah, kid. Must, no must. It's a, it's a guaranteed three points, mate. Saturday, <laughs> 16th of April, 3 o'clock kickoff, 1,500 hours, Man United. Surely, it's a win. Done. Yeah, three points. All, no. It's just not, is I'm it? I'm not getting right. duped again, James. Yeah, I know. Honestly, <laughs> honestly the end, the, I've been saying it here. The end of the season, the end of the season clip show of all of us giving out scores and then like when it was Watford, I was like, 3-0! And then it was 4-1 Watford. <laughs> well, like, it's going to be pretty long. It's going to be a good 10 minutes, I reckon. Best, so, Nathan come out and goes, if this, te- if this team starts, we're losing 3-1, 4-1, 2-1. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he did, he did as well, yeah. Have yeah. some positivity. Yeah, have some faith, Nathan. Like, have some faith. Like, oh, all right, all right. All right, next thing you know, I told you, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, so Norwich are bad. Norwich on yeah. the weekend. Dean yeah. Smith in charge. It's been very topsy turvy, up and down. Surely, yeah. three points. No, no, no. no. Uh, look, listen, after the Everton game, which should have, like, I was guaranteeing that to be a win. There is not, I said at the beginning of the show, there is no guaranteed points, let alone wins anymore out of any of these games. Listen, it's Norwich, it's Old Trafford. We give the score, so I'll give it three 0 Man United just because I'm feeling co- like I'm feeling not confident. That's the wrong word. Feeling generous, but I can't see it happening. You know, what I mean, I just don't want to say like two one Norwich, which is what it's more likely going to be. So, uh, yeah, I'll go three 0 three one Man United because it is Norwich at the end of the day. So. All right, it's also Brush's birthday on Saturday. Happy birthday, for Brush. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, score prediction. This one's for Brush Nathan. Surely it's a win. Norwich three o'clock Saturday. <sighs> <laughs> you know what? Their striker's going to score. He scores goals. He scores okay. goals. Okay. Pook, uh, yeah, Pookie's going to score. Um, I'm just, I just hope we're going to get two. But I just can't see it. I can't see it, guys. I think we might, we might end up scraping a draw one all. We might just draw one all. They're going to get one goal up, and then we're just going to scrape last minute Cristiano header from somewhere. And we're going to get a goal back. I'm hoping that's the case because in my mind I'm thinking two one Nor- Norwich, but I'm just I can't say that right now. I, like, I don't want to manifest it. I don't want to manifest it. Now, that's what I'm thinking. It's two one Norwich. That is honestly what I'm thinking. But I can't manifest that, bro. You know what I mean? Don't so, have it enough to play good nah. enough football to take even them guys on. I know mm-hmm. if they come at us with the intensity that they can do, we'll struggle. We we ain't got intensity in us. Like we got no players with intensity in, inside us. So. I don't know how we're going to be able to, to, to do what we're doing. I don't know. But whenever I say this, sometimes they do come and surprise us out of nowhere and batter a team. So I'm, I'm just hoping that I can be pessimistic and it'll be just working reverse psychology on them. <laughs> 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 but yeah, they're going to do too well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, prepare yourself for disappointed and you'll never be unhappy, will you? So. Exactly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, let's concede 17 goals in their last nine games, Lauren. Yeah. Surely this is Man United with at least two goals here. It's got to be a victory at Lauren. Old Trafford, three o'clock Saturday. Lauren. What are you saying? Give us your score saying, prediction. You know, just remember, Everton had the same problem and they had a clean sheet against us and won. <laughs> so this is good. No, don't listen to them. Don't have it. Don't listen to them. I think it's going to be the most boring game. It's going to be nil-nil. Like, nil. <laughs> send it into the ether. <laughs> I think it's going to be so boring to watch. And what it's going to be a nil-nil. Nil. No, nil-nil. We're not getting anything. We've got no one's one getting anything. Nice like one nice day before the end of the season, I'm happy. Like, you know, game day. One nice game day for the rest of the season, I'll be happy. Oh, no, they'll, just give, they'll just give us hope, Nathan. They'll just give us a know, glimmer of hope. Too much. Nil, nil. L- James, Lauren's giving you a clean sheet. Yeah. <laughs> That's positive. positive. No, I like it. <laughs> I'm trying to take the positives from the game, yeah. <laughs> I won't tell you they just come off of a 2 0 win against Burnley. So we can But surely this has got to be a win. I'm not saying Man United are going to turn their season around. I'm not saying top four. I'm saying they're playing bottom of the league, James. <laughs> Give us a positive spin to end the show. Positive spin. Uh, it's Brush's birthday on Saturday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Yay! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yay! This one's for you. This score prediction for you, Brush. 
Come this on, James. Is, mate, and he's a big supporter of like me and all the stuff we do. So fair play to you. And this is for you, mate. Uh, one one. Who candles to throw out? Come on, on, mate. Stop getting in front of our birthday, bro. One, 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 one. We're in presents, one, mate. I know, yeah. One, one. <laughs> just for you. One, one. One, one. It would have been one nil. One, oh, one, just for you. He said one, one of own goals. The foul. <laughs> one, the foul. Goals. Give us the score prediction. Come on. Give us some positivity. Uh, I think that, like, first 10 minutes, Maguire's going to score an own goal. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why not? And then Why we'll, not? We'll be, we'll be pushing for a goal for the whole game, and then Maguire will score another own goal. We'll score a goal. Nah, we're two nil. I'll tell you what. No, no, it's, no, no, no. it's a goal for the badge, anyway. It's the United. Yeah. It's the United player scoring. There's a positive of that. Yeah. I said, you lot are not making me want to watch this game, asshole. I'm not find something else to do Saturday at three o'clock. I'm looking for a prediction. Brush is happy. That's all we know. That's what's... That's what's, that's what's <laughs> Thank God, man. Brush Thanks is for the happy. support. Appreciate the support. All right. That is all we have time for, though. Uh, please press that like and subscribe button. If you are watching on Twitter, make sure you come over to KS1 TV and press that subscribe button. I, I kindly put the uh, the link in the bio in and in the uh, comment section. So you just press the link. I did that on Facebook as well. Just press the link. Come and join us. Press the subscribe button. We're having fun. Uh, did the you comment just hit section as well. We did just hit a thousand. Did yes, that's why I'm going to put myself yes, through torture. Did. Yeah, me and Nathan. I'm going to do a gym session with shoulders McGee over here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just wait until how tough the session's going to be when United <laughs> View, which is on 99.9k. So we need like a hundred wow. now. When that hits a hundred. Then we'll make it even tougher, and then we'll do twenty-four hour, and legs. twenty-four hour gym, twenty-four hour gym session, yeah. film. You know, charity, twenty-four hour charity gym session. Hey, 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 hey. 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 I'm not, I'm not endorsing that unless you put flexing on a session as well. Like, I'm not. It'll, it'll, it'll come down, mate. It'll come down, What's no problem. Man? But if if you've got a thousand subscribers now, if everyone chops in like a ten p super chat, we can get Nathan some new internet, can't we? <laughs> Loads of space. I'll get you an Uber. Hey, I'll get you an Uber. You can just sit here. We'll kill. Yes. We'll kill. Gym session's going to be savage. You're going to have to do a penalty shootout afterwards. Yeah. Let's go. Right. You, ain't, you ain't kicking no balls after that, Kier, mate. You ain't kicking no balls, bro. <laughs> Enjoy. Don't underestimate me. Don't I'm, I'm not, mate. Big man, you're no, 17 stone. Who's <laughs> your 17 stone? Unit. Huh? I you trained for this. I trained for this. <laughs> Train. It leaves you quick. It leaves you quickly, though, mate. It oh, leaves yeah. you quickly. <laughs> never, never, never. All right, all right. Um, thank you for everyone who's joined us tonight. The chat was absolutely buzzing. Appreciate the support as well. New names in there. Press that subscribe button. Loving, loving the chat. Loving the chat. Thanks for joining us tonight, Garth. No, thanks for having me. Pleasure as always. Really enjoyed it tonight, even though we're oh. talking about Man United. <laughs> of course, my co-host Nathan Edmonton. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks a lot. It's been good. It's been good. Thank you very much for joining us, Lauren. Thank you very much for having me. We had a laugh, as Garth said, even though we're talking about United. <laughs> and of course, thank you very much for joining us tonight, James. Always a pleasure, never a chore, mate. All right, all right. As I always say, please press that like and subscribe button. Please join us next week. For the uh, Man United show, we will do be doing the post-match reaction of the Norwich game at five o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Um, yeah, that's all we have time for. Peace out, people. Stay safe and wash your hands. <laughs>